Hello, thank you for choosing this video. And in this video, we are going to learn how we can pass data from our controllers to our views. Uh, this video is a part of a course that I'm creating, a .NET Core MVC course. And uh, in the previous video, we configured our models and created our DB context. Now to proceed and create a repository pattern for our project, we need to first know how, we can, how can we pass data to our models. So there are a few ways. One of them is view data. The other one is, let me comment it out so we can have multiple lines. Okay, now the other one is view bag and the other one is passing data by model, which is also called strongly typed and there's also another way called temp data which i'm going to talk about all of them in this video now these three types that we have so let me move this down these three types that we have have almost the same use but in different kind of way to implement them and uh, the view data is actually a dictionary that is provided for us by dotnet core using the controller class and the view bag and temp data is also provided by the controller class. But uh, the view data is a dictionary that can be globally passed to our views that, uh, for example, here we call the index method. And after the call, the request will process anything that we have. Then we, ha we can create some view data. It can be a dictionary and let's just create one view data and here i can just name it so in a dictionary we have a key value pair so the key here is going to be added here so the key can be for example the name and here i can set a value for it and the value can be anything any type can be it can be a string it can be an int and uh here we go this is the view data so now when the request comes to our index page and uh, when it reaches here, it will create a value inside the dictionary that is called view data. Now we can access this view data in our view. So let's go into home controller view that and the index view. So here now I can access the view that we have created. And how can I do that? We talked about in the previous video that inside our views, we can write C sharp code by using the razor element, which is at sign. And here, I, if I have only one line of C sharp code, I can write it directly. For example, here we want view data and I should specify the key, which is name. And here is our view data. So the data that we have passed to the name key will be printed out here. And also if we have more than one line, I can do it like this. I can open up to brackets and inside of them, I can say view data and uh, the key, which is name. All right, but as you can see, it's giving me an error because when we have multiple lines here, we need to pass this data to something. For example, I need to pass it to an integer because I know it is an integer and I'm gonna call it name and it's going to be equal to the view data that we have. But what is the problem? So here you can see the value that the view data gets is an object. And in C sharp, we have a concept called boxing and unboxing. So when we want to box something, we can put it inside an object. Object can get any sort of values. It can get int, it can get a string and the value that we store inside the dictionary, which is the view data that we have, is of type object. So to unbox this data, we need to cast that data. So here I'm going to open up to parentheses and call int. So it will convert this value that we have inside the object with the key name will be casted to int. And I can use this name anywhere that I want. For example, here I want to print out name again. So uh, what I can do because this is an HTML file, we can say the name is and here I can just pass the variable that we have. And as you can notice, I'm using the at sign keyboard. So let me zoom in so we can see better. Okay, you can see I'm using the at sign keyboard and any variable that I have defined here, I can use them inside my HTML form. Now, if we run the project, 
here you can see nothing and uh, the reason is the text that we wrote is in white because the css that we have so uh what i can do is just go inside the view source page and here you can see the name is tree and here is the name that we have and uh, the semicolon is not necessary so uh, it's a habit and you can see our values are being printed inside our html page you can give this a style you can do anything that you want with it so uh, that's how we can pass data using view data and as i said view data can contain any value that we want all right now we also have view bag and uh, the view bag is very much like the view data but the only difference with view bag and view data is that view bag is not a dictionary it's a dynamic part if i hover my mouse on it you can say it's dynamic but it will both use the same key value pairs so here inside view bag when i have a view data with the key of name i cannot have a view bag with the same key what i can do is to add another one for example age and let's add it to 18 and here if we go inside our view and uh, i let's say the view bag age is and here we're going to say at sign view bag dot age and here if i uh, add a breakpoint and we run the application you can see when it hits the breakpoint if i hover my mouse on view data you can see it has two values so if i open it up you can see here we have a key value pair of name which is three and age which is 18. so if i add another key of name to our view bag it will be added to the view data as well so we can have two key of names and that will conflict in our application so you should use one of them either use view data or use view bag and it's the same for view bag as well if i hover on it you can see we have the name and age both of them here are present next is the temp data the temp data is very 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 much like view data but with one difference so let's test it out here you can say temp data and when i define it you can see it is very much like video data here we define a key for example test and we can assign a value to it let's assign in a string and i'm gonna say test of temp data all right now what's the difference so the first difference is that the dictionaries that these two uses are not the same unlike the view bag and uh, the temp data has its own dictionary and uh, another difference that is the biggest difference between view data and temp data is with view data when you define a value inside of view data you only have access to this view data in the view that your action is calling for example here we are calling the index view and i can access this view data only inside the view that i'm in but with temp data even we redirect to another page we can access to this temp data so the scenario goes like this for example let's say we're going to return redirect to action we're going to go to another action and uh, this is a very common thing to do for example when you want to you want only the people that have logged in access to the detail page and uh, you want to redirect to the login page if anyone that isn't logged in uh, try to access this method and you want to pass some errors so you can use temp data here we want to go to call the login action login action is inside admin controller so after we define the action or the method we should define a controller name as well which is admin all right now if we run here you can see i'm immediately are re redirected to the admin page and let's do something cool let's go in here and i want to see the result that we have here so let's change the key and value let's change it to access denied and the text here i want it to be an error which is to access this page this page you should log in first with an exclamation mark all right let's save it and inside my login page here at the top 
I want to define an H3. And here I want my temp data and the key of access denied. All right, now let's open up the page. Here you can see the error that has been passed to the login page, which is to access this page, you should log in first. And that's because we are redirecting from home controller index page to our login page. And throughout our login, we are passing the temp data that we have. If I use view data here, we cannot see any value inside access denied because view data will not pass the data through a redirect. All right, that's the three things that we have here. And let me remove the redirect. And inside our login page, I want to remove this as well. All right. And the other one is the model, which is strongly typed. What does that mean? So it means that inside our index or inside any HTML page that we have, we can define a model that is being passed from our controller. And we can pass that model from returning the view. And if we see the parameters that the view can get, here you can see it is getting a model of type object. So it can be any model. But inside our index HTML page, here when we want to define a model, we just say model. And here I'm going to say what model do we want it to be. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, just be patient and you will see in a second. So here is a list of models that I have. And I want the model to be index model. All right, it can be any class that you have any model class that you have. So when I do this inside my code inside here, for example, I can have access to every parameters that this index model has. And to access them, I can just say model with E capital M look at the difference. Here, I'm defining the model. And I'm saying it is going to be an index model. And here I want to access the parameters of our index model. And if I press dot, you can see all the parameters that we have. The difference with the model and the view bag and view data and temp data is that in view bag and view data, we do not know what parameters do we have. We do not know if this view data has a name, not that it has the value inside the name, but we also don't know that the name itself exists or not. But when we defining a model, it is strongly typed, which means that we know all the types and all the values that it contains. And it will help us to prevent so many runtime errors that we might get, which one of them is the here that I'm converting the view data to int. And it is a very risky thing to do because it can give me runtime error. Uh, because the name might be not integer. And here, let's go inside our HTML code. And inside our h1, I, I want to say model dot title. And here inside our hero section, instead of this text, I want to say model dot description. All right, now we have put the values that it should use. But how can we pass this index model to this view? And I showed you that we can pass it through the view thing that we are returning. But to pass it a data, we need to first define the data. And we're going to read this data from database. And I'm going to tell you how in the next uh, episode. But for now, I'm going to just create a, a sample model. So let's say we have an index model, let's call it index, and it's going to be a new index model. And here I want to pass it some data. So the ID is going to be one, the badges is going to be null, the description is going to be test description, title is going to be title. And I don't want to pass other data because we're not using them right now. And in here, I want to pass the index model that I have. Now let's run it again. Let's see what we've done. All right, here we can see the title that I have passed have been put in here. And the test description that we wrote have been put in here. And that's great. We have defined the model and passed the data through our model to our view. I sincerely hope you learned something. Uh, if you not noticed until now, I'm not following any YouTube algorithm. So I, I'm not following the times that the YouTube suggests. My videos are mostly less than eight minutes. So I can't put any ads on it as well. And I do that because teaching is a hobby of mine. And I care about you learning this stuff more than satisfying YouTube algorithm. 
So the least that you can do for me is to like this video so more people can learn this stuff. And you can also encourage me and uh, let me know that the work that I've put it inside these videos and the time that I put to edit these videos and put them for you are worth it. That's it. In the next video, we're gonna learn about repository pattern and how can we retrieve data from the database, add data to the database, and uh, take care.